Alrighty, 8.1 find angle measures of polygons. You guys know what a polygon, poly just meaning many and gon just meaning, I don't know, closed figure. Like a triangle. Well, that's just sloppy. Maybe I should come over here. A triangle. Oh, this is better because it's sketch pad. Notice we have a triangle. That's a triangle. Quadrilateral. Notice I made the segments all nice and bold. That's a quadrilateral. And then if we have a five sided figure, that would be a pentagon. Six sided, hexagon. But I think I'm talking about stuff that you should be fully familiar with from before. You're probably wondering well, what are these little segments on the inside? Those segments are called diagonals. Notice there are many more diagonals than the ones that I drew, but these are all of the diagonals that are possible off of one, uh, one, one vertice or one point. Go ahead and draw each of these in nice sequential order, kind of like, kind of like this. Note that I have the triangle, then the quadrilateral, pentagon, and then the hexagon. Pause the video because I'm going to keep going. I really don't feel like waiting on you. I'm going to call this the number of sides. Note it is three sides, four sides, five sides, and six sides. Taking this, I can identify the sum of the angles in the inside of each of the figures. Notice the triangle we already know to be 180 degrees. But before we do that, we're going to start identifying how many triangles there are. Well, with one triangle, obviously, it's one. I'm also going to have you write a process. A process is how we get from this to the sum of the interior angles. I'm going to call the sum of the interior angles I. But before I do that, I want to write it out. Sum of interior angles. I should probably pause and talk about what the heck I'm talking, what I mean by interior angles. Notice the interior angles is this angle. Let me go ahead and take my markup tool. This angle plus this one plus this one. Those three angles added together is 180, regardless of its size, as long as it's a triangle. Let's come back here. So I just take 180, and I multiply it by 1, which is obviously 180. Now in the quadrilateral, by drawing that diagonal, by the way, a diagonal connects two non-adjacent vertices. That meaning this vertice and this vertice is adjacent to this vertice, but a diagonal connects a non-adjacent vertice to it. Notice here we have two triangles. That means I have the 180 degrees and I have another 180 degrees. So my process to find out the sum of the interior angles is simply 180 times 2, which is 360. I'm sure you're starting to expect what's happening here. I have 180, 180, and 180. That means there are three triangles in a pentagon and it's simply 180 times 3, which is, you think about it, 540. Likewise, I have the 180, 180, 180, and 180, and I get four triangles with a hexagon, and that's 180 times 4. And that is the two completions of a circle, which is 720. Note, we have the sums. You're probably starting to expect the process. Notice every time we add one here, like if I had a 7, I'd have a heptagon. Yeah, just seven sides, whatever, blah. Then you're going to have, notice this is also increasing by 1, so we're going to have 5 triangles, and that would be 180 times 5. I think you probably expected that to be the process. So if I say there are n number of sides, some n gone, some unknown number of sides, then obviously to get each of these numbers of triangles, it's the number of sides minus 2. And that tells us the number of triangles. Well, you just take 180 and multiply by n minus 2 to get the interior, the sum of the interior angles i. That is a formula from the section that you need to know, and that's where it comes from. All right, while I'm here, I want to talk about regular polygon. A regular polygon gives us a different formula. We can take that formula. Remember, our formula is sum of the interior angles I is equal to 180 times N minus 2. Note that each of the angles in a regular polygon, this being an equilateral triangle, are all congruent. So if I wanted to find this, I would take the sum, which in this case is 180, and divide by the number of angles, 3. Now the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360, but there are, in this case they happen to be right, but you can see why here in a second. There are four congruent angles, so we would divide by 4 and get 90. Each of these interior angles is congruent, because it's a regular polygon. Notice if it's a hexagon, then it's got to have six equal sides. 
we found the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon to be 720. So we take 720 and we divide out to 6. Note, to get each interior angle of a regular polygon, I would take the interior angles, or the sum of the interior angles, and divide out the number of angles. Note that the same number of angles is the same thing as the number of sides. So you just do divide by n. This is each interior angle of a regular polygon. You might need to write that out and set it equal to it. Unfortunately, we don't have a really good variable for this or a system for it. I'm going to call it r, but keep in mind this is each interior angle of a regular polygon. If you note that it's number of triangles times 180 divided by the number of angles. That's that formula. Let's get into a new concept. And that has to do with exterior angles. This polygon right here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sides. So we call this a heptagon. These things out here are called exterior angles. Notice it's not an angle bigger than 180. If you take a side length and you extend it like a ray, then as you connect back to the side, that's called an exterior angle. If you were to draw it here and put a ray on this side, I want you to note that it'd be the same as this angle because they'd be vertical angles. So what I do is just go around in a circle creating those angles. But I've created a little pie chart over here to talk about the sum of the exterior angles of, a of any polygon. Note that if I take each of these colors and I add them up, what does it complete? Well, obviously a circle, which means that the sum of this is 360. This may be a bit counterintuitive for you, so let me see if I can give you a few more examples to help you understand it. Let's take angle 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I went ahead and measured them. Note that these are measured, and they are synced and sketch pad. If I sum them up, then it's equal to 360. This is not a stagnant thing that I typed in there. It comes from these calculations. Now, if you still don't see it, maybe I should go ahead and do a little animations. Note that this is a pentagon, because there are five sides. I want to shrink this pentagon, and I want you to note that the angles, the sum of those angles become the outside. In fact, let me go ahead and undo all, because I had some arcs in there you needed to see. Let's do it again. The sum of those angles equals a circle. If you didn't quite catch that, let's take away one of the sides. Ooh, that was pretty. And now let's shrink it again. And for some reason that glitched. Well, that's just weird. Yeah, we'll disregard all that. I don't know what's wrong with this sketch. Basically, those out of 360. It's pretty good enough, pretty well good enough. Got the 360 here. Now, let's go ahead and write that as, as a conclusion here. The sum of the exterior angles, we'll call it E, but there is no defined letter we use for the sum of the exterior angles of a polygon, is equal to 360. There's no computation going on. It's just simply 360. Now let's do a few problems together to make sure you understand these concepts that I've thrown at you. This is the each interior angle of a regular polygon. This is the sum of the interior angles of a polygon, and yada, 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 yada. I'm going to go ahead and grab some images, and let's solve some problems. All right, on question number three, it's asking, well, what is the sum of the interior angles of a nonagon? Remember, a nonagon is nine sides. So this would just be 180 times 9 minus 2. And 9 minus 2 is 7 times 180. If you'd like, you can go ahead and pull out a calculator. If you're not really feeling like typing that in, and you get 180 times 7 is 1260. Please do not make this difficult on the homework check next class. That is all there is to it. The next one says, well, what if the sum is equal to 720? Uh-oh, we're going to have to do a little algebra. I'm simply going to take the 720 and divide out the 180, because that tells me how many triangles there are. So 720 divided by 180 is 4. And I got n minus 2. And I add 2 to both sides, and I got 6. I know that this was one of the ones we did in the exploration, but just keep in mind that these angles are large. All you have to do is just solve this process exactly the same. So this is a hexagon, which is what happens when you w make a witch mad. She makes you gone, puts a hex on you. Let's do the next one. Notice the sum of the interior angles is equal to 180 times n minus 2. But n in this case is, well, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So it's 5 minus 2. Let's go ahead and simplify this while we're at it. It's 180 times 3, which is 540. Checking my work because I'm getting a little tired. 540. 
Notice this is the sum of the interior angles, which is x plus 86 plus 140 plus 138 plus 59. That just looks like a crazy equation, but it just comes down to how fast you can pull out your two thumbs on that calculator and type those numbers in. 86 plus 140 plus 138 plus 59 is 423. This is equal to 540. So if I subtract out 423 from 540, I get 117. Boom! That is it. To recap it, in case you missed what I did, this is the sum of the interior angles of a pentagon because this is a pentagon. And then I just took all these angles up and wrote them there. That is it. That's all I did. Next one. Notice this is the exterior angles. Remember the sum of the exterior angles is? Yes, no calculation. But in this case, I don't know what x is, so I'm going to have to do some addition to find out what it is. Oops, that's 77. So plus x plus 77. Don't know what happened there. Now it just comes down to good old algebra skills. Let's take 44, I mean 45 plus 40 plus 77 and subtract that from 360. I get, ta -ta 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 -ta, I get 192. And if we divide out 3, boom, 66. X is equal to 66. That is it for the section. I just want to emphasize that in the section, you might want to look it over in case you didn't quite catch it all from the video. Note that from the section, it's page 507. Whoops. So page 507, it's got the theorem for the sum of the interior angles of a polygon. Boom, 180 times n minus 2. It's also got some regular polygon shenanigans here. Ooh, exterior angles of polygon. That's pretty much what I created in Sketchpad. Simply equal to 360. I also showed you how to use them. So now, I would like for you to complete your homework, which is this right here, 8.1, page 510, numbers 1 through 27 odds. 491, 1 through 7 is also due. There will be a homework check over both of these next class. We'll also, since your fifth period, we'll be grading simplifying radicals, yada, 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 yada.